how we have some of the professional environmental as well as guys about how to perform as a renter, but when you're in a social with a lot of senior and these four males, how do you navigate that surface to really make an impression? I think that Monica already a little bit answered the question because I think it's not about thinking that I'm a girl. It's something I often say when people ask me, how is it to be Swede in Italy? Well, of course, it does kind of change my perspective because when I'm in Sweden, I get a door smashed in my face, but they look at me as if I'm a person. Personally, I kind of prefer. However, if I let myself get... Uh, how do you say, it's subject to the fact that I'm the only girl, etc., etc. I'm kind of afraid of that stuff. I can actually behave in the appropriate way. So I think it's about you being a unique, you can really bring something different to the table, speak up and be yourself. You're just a person like all the other men in the competition. You're just a person. Can I ask you a question? Where is your internship and what kind of sector or what firm? Thank you. Uh, so it's at the Canada Pension Plan Investment Board and Principal Credit Investment, so that's private debt. Uh, it's within the private investments group, so like private equity guys in general. In Toronto. Well, I think it's important that you are, and the reason I'm asking is because you were mentioning Italy, but if it's in Toronto, then I think it's a little bit different. What I would say is, um, as an intern, I think you just need, first of all, to perform excellently at what they ask you to do. That's kind of number one, because in reality, what we do when we look at all the summer interns at the end of the day says, who is the best at the job? Because really, it's a 10-week interview. You're basically constantly interviewed. And I would say when you have to sort of bond or socialize with the senior people, I think you don't want to be I would say exaggerating in any way because I, I think we can see through very clearly uh, the summer intern that are annoying, you know, telling you every three seconds something just because they feel they need to talk to you. I think you just need to be genuine, be yourself, and be proactive. You'd be surprised how much I like, for example, when I have, I mean, there's a junior woman that works for me. She knows what I do and what I'm following, and she sends me over the weekend an article that is interesting to me. But she doesn't send me 25 or she doesn't send me things that are not pertinent. She only sends me one that is extremely pertinent. And I remembered her from the beginning when she started working for me because I was like, whoa, this woman is really smart. She's, she knows what I'm interested in and she's sending me something that maybe I had already read, but the fact that she also read it and thought of sending it to me, just FYI, you might find this interesting, was great. So be very thoughtful in assessing the personality of the senior people and what they might like and what they're interested in. I think everything starts by listening and being genuinely interested in other people. Because when you network, to me, the definition is of networking is not the slimy shake hands at a cocktail party and say something just to say it. It's more creating a relationship with a very selected group of people, so small group of people, and the relationship needs to be two-way, needs to be mutually beneficial. And so you start by listening to somebody and understanding what they do and how you can be helpful to them. That's really all that matters. And then once they see that you're genuine and you're helpful to them, I guarantee they'll be helpful to you. And you get the job. And you get the job. And you get the job. <laughs> Like, um, if you want to pursue a career in L'Oreal, would you recommend to stay there, like, during the whole career path, or just change companies a lot? Because I interned at L'Oreal in Germany, and a lot of, yeah, general manager, they've been there, like, for 15 to 20 years now, so that was just um, a personal advice. Well, I say this offline. I would not stay for, at L'Oreal for 15, 20 years unless you're enjoying it, of course. Uh, I think today the workplace is very, very changing and I think we appreciate people have a different perspective. I myself kind of regret that I haven't left L'Oreal at a certain point. Um, but I have been traveling with L'Oreal and I have personal reasons why I am probably stayed much longer in Italy than I thought I was, doing, was uh, going to do. So I don't think that's a rule that you have to stay on, no. I think that it's about pursuing your passion 
uh, if you get the right opportunities. Before I heard Christina saying that she was in a job she didn't like, she was pregnant, and she went out to look for the right opportunity. So I think that's how you have to do it. I think that's how men look at things more as well. I think we are more loyal because that's a little bit our upbringing. And uh, yeah, I think you have to be loyal to yourself as well. Not only to, you know, it's a work market, so. But as a general, <clears throat> as a general recipe, if you, if you are in a place, in a workplace, in which you enjoy, in which you grow, in which you find yourself challenged every day, it means that you need to stay. Otherwise, you need to go. I mean, this is what I, this is what I always try to find and to ask myself. So, uh, I would like to know, apart from Christina, who already told us, how do you daily combine your uh, successful career with your private life? I, I think the, the key uh, part of it is to find the right partner. So, my husband uh, has been always encouraging me. Uh, he's the one uh, cooking when he's home. He's the one... Uh, uh, ordering online the food every week because uh, otherwise yeah the, the refrigerator would be probably if it was for me uh, empty uh, and if you have that I think it's pretty easy to combine the personal life and the your your career Choose carefully. I agree I have a, I have an Italian husband but he has a French mother uh, so that helps uh, so I think the partner is very important, but I think the first thing is also really to believe that it is possible. Uh, sometimes I hear it hasn't happened to me uh, and I couldn't care if it would, but some uh, small kids, my daughter is 11 years old, is 11 years old, and like comments from women who are not working, oh, your mother is coming today, you're so lucky. You should not get just, you know, you're doing exactly what you feel like you're doing, not have any guilt about it. Your kid is happy. I had a happy childhood. I love my mother. She always worked. She wasn't there for me. I missed the dentist appointment. I learned that I had to be able to take care of myself. And I think that's a great lesson. So I wouldn't worry about it. I would say I have three children under the age of 10. And I have a husband who has a huge career, actually. He travels all the time like I do. I think the way we make it work is the following. One, we're organized like a military operation. So you need to be extremely organized. So you won't have the ability to say, oh, I'm going to go to Paris this weekend. That's probably not going to happen, the impromptu thing. You have to be scheduled. And you need to treat the family schedule like a business. I treat my... Um, Meetings, for example, when I need to see the teacher of my children or when I see the play where my kids is doing the recital as a business meeting and I put them in the calendar like they are a business meeting. I tell my assistant on Thursday at noon I need to go to my kids' school. Of course, I can't go to everything. I pick two or three, but for those, I treat them like a client meeting. So that's point one. Point two, agreed, super supportive spouse or you, it's not going to work. And then I would say point three is you need to be comfortable relinquishing some control. So initially I wanted to know what my kids would wear in the morning when they go to school. Now I've been gone this whole week and my kids are in New York and there's a nanny that is taking care of them. And I have no idea if my daughter is going to school, you know, like a princess or dressed with like a Halloween costume or with wrong colors and, and different shoes. But you know what? It's okay. She's happy. She's well adjusted. They're thriving. They have mothers that are role models. And I think it's okay. Um, I have a question more on, on, on a general approach and how to be feminist, I would say. Um, you said before, don't cry in front of the boys. Um, but what do you say about don't get m mad in front of the boys, for example, when they... I mean, if you face discrimination, would you suggest to still get mad or if they just don't get it, to let it go? I mean, I'm still at a point where I'm very young and I'm passionate, let's say, about being feminist. Do you suggest that sometimes... Um, it's not about the point of don't cry in front of the boys, just another thing. Uh, but, I mean, do you suggest to still get, let's say, um, 
in the in the nyarsi a little bit when when they uh, when they discriminate us or what do you suggest us to behave to you uh, all of you uh, not only you <laughs> I think this is a very difficult question. Do I, I talk a little bit, do you have more time to think, or do you have an answer already? <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I told her the 6.35 a.m. this morning, I woke up at 4 a.m. I woke up at 4 a.m., so I need 30 seconds to say. <laughs> no, I think it's very interesting, because honestly, I... I can say my mother is a feminist. Uh, sometimes I hear her and her husband, and her husband is a very helpful husband, much more so than most people our age. And she's like, ah, you know, men here and there. But, um, so I'm, I grew up thinking that, you know, it's important, uh, rights for everybody. I was in the uh, pram, uh, going down the big avenue in Gothenburg, uh, shouting, uh, we all have to have a space in the kindergarten, etc., etc. And I went to kindergarten and I was very happy. Um, it's difficult because sometimes when you do, I felt when I was in Italy in the beginning, after a time I got, you know, when you talk about something that doesn't interest people, uh, it doesn't work. So you have to find the right way of expressing that indignation because I think you're right you have to stand up for what you believe but you also have to find the way of making people listen so maybe it's not right to react when you see it but think about it and say okay what happened and how can I make that not happen again and maybe by helping the person who was badly treated uh, or thinking of what will be my reaction the next time so it will be firm controlled uh, listen to because it's also you know we have a lot of ideas about how people should react if they're a girl or a boy or a man or a woman and since we are seen as much more emotional because we can usually cry I do I don't I never cried in front of a boss fortunately that didn't happen to me uh, but uh, I get emotional about things and I think today what we can see is that globally in the Western world it is more okay also for guys to, to cry in front of the girls. In Sweden, a boy who cries, a girl who cries is the same. A girl who fights and a boy who fights is kind of the same. doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, it's not such a big deal. And usually you give a, a car to the girls and also a barber to the guys. Then if they get whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, however, it is really it's more difficult, I find, in Italy to talk about those issues. So. I try to listen and understand what women think about it. And sometimes I'm surprised how young women your age in my team, they don't see certain things that I see. So then I say maybe I'm overreacting or thinking things that are not happening. But I also think it's a question of uh, you know, what age you have. I never thought I would give up my career for my husband. Never. It was not on the map, ever. Actually, I did put a little bit of my career on hold for my husband. Because if I would have liked to, today I would probably be traveling around the world like a global trotter. But I decided that this was a good equilibrium for our family. So I stayed on in Italy. Is it the perfect situation professionally for me? I'm not sure, but I'm working on it. Uh, but to come back to your question, I think it's really, it's, it's difficult to uh, answer. I hope now that we've had the time to think about a better answer. Can I give you the word? Yes. She's amazing, and I wanted to live in Sweden where the boys get the dolls, by the way. Uh, Isra <laughs> would say, the right answer, as always, when you're not sure what the answer is, is it depends. But going back to your indignarsi, I would say two things. One. If you have a smart answer in the moment, which sometimes it comes to you, do it. So for example, when you are in the board meeting, I remember this forever. I go to the first board meeting in Milan. I must have been like a first year or so, third year analyst, first year associate, I don't know. I was Italian, they staffed me on the project. We were selling a company that was a billion dollar 
you know, refrigerators company. And the board was like 50 guys, 50, you know, 20 guys, 50 euro plus. And I show up with the managing director and I've done the valuation of the company. And they're giving me the usual, signorina, io vorrei caffè macchiato, signorina cappuccino, signorina whatever, right? And I had the promptness in front of the board to say, this is terrific, I'm gonna find out who makes coffee, and then whenever you're ready, we can go through the valuation of the company. And they're stunned. They're like, okay, who's this chick, right? So if you have that great answer in the moment, you can be indignata in a nice, polite way and smart way, and that's okay. If you don't have the answer in the moment, as always, like in the art of war that I suggest you all read, is like when the enemy is stronger than you, disappear and reconsider. Disappear and reconsider. And to me, the truth is, in general, the battle of women that are indignant about being mistreated, and all of us have been told horrible things, I'm sure, in the last 20 years from guys that had zero sensitivity and treated us like I don't know what, um, is to actually work sometimes within the system. And then once you get into a position of power in the system, you can be an agent of change. And so maybe it's better for me to play the game a little bit and you know pretend I don't care sometimes because now I'm in a position that when I hire people, I can decide who to hire and I can hire more diversity and be more inclusive. So sometimes you change the world by playing within the system to then change the system from the inside. So consider that as well. You still can be mad, you just don't need to show it all the time. Very good answer. 